watching Roofing Contractor Marketing Minute, episode 35. Today we talk about how flying a drone for your roofing company could land your ass in jail. Okay, for those of you guys out there who are, as we've talked about before, flying drones for the roofing company, there's a few things that you should know while you're out there flying it. You're technically flying this in a commercial use. So we've caught up today with some guys in studio, the guys from DroneWorks. They're in here talking a little bit about you know, all the things that you need to know to pass certain tests that are out there in order to be able to fly a drone for commercial use, you know, such as flying to you know, scope out a roof or to take pictures of a project, something like that. So we brought them in. I said, hey, get over here. We're gonna shoot an episode of Marketing Minute right now and talk a little bit about this, help our guys keep themselves out of the clink. So we got Mitch Apple, Zach Davis, for some of you guys already know, you've seen them around. These guys are like the foremost drone people on the roofing scene. They're out there, they're around, they're at a lot of shows and they're helping. They work with a lot of roofing contractors across the country to help them either get outfitted with drones or to teach them how to fly their drones or to teach them how to pass these types of courses. And so what they're here doing today is, is working on the course stuff. And so um, I guess I'm just gonna jump right into it. We only got a few minutes here where we try to give our you know, viewers a little bit of a deep dive on, on something that you know, they should probably take a little bit further look into afterwards. And you know, Mitch, you've been here all day um, shooting this and you listen to it, you know, the whole thing, you know, it's long and on and on and on. It's, it's, it's not exactly riveting stuff as far as uh, the most entertaining to watch. But it's a ton of knowledge, right? I mean, you really got to be paying attention. This was, you know, day one of day three in trying to record all of this. So, you know, um, digging into it a little bit, what are we doing? I mean, what, tell me a little bit more as if I'm a roofing contractor, roofing company, why do they have to have this? This seems like super, I mean, I'm not going to fly an airplane, you know, actually, but no, that's a great point that you're making. And yeah, you, as you said, it's a lot of information, but it really is practical information that will apply to guys who are out in the field. And as you said, you're, you're not a pilot, you're not going to be flying around and, and need to know everything associated with it. But there's a lot of basic rules that you do need to understand to operate safely and commercially. And as you said, make sure you don't up in jail. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's true, right? I mean, that could actually happen if, if you, you know, I don't know how common it is or anything like that but everything I'm no, doing is it's legit. As right? you said that's 100% factual. It's not very common. Typically you have to be operating hazardously and then hurt someone but there have been multiple situations where somebody's been operating in an area where they shouldn't be ended up hitting somebody in the head and the person ends up in jail. They're drone arrested with a lot of consequences to deal with. Okay now you want, go, wait, you want to try that again? Why is that? In jail with your drone arrested yeah. <laughs> the drone doesn't get arrested too? No, just him. They don't take so look at the drone. Sometimes they'll confiscate your drone, so you will not be able to have it for a little while. They'll say that it's evidence and they won't be able to give it back to you for a little while. So. Yeah, so the drone gets arrested. What are you yep, the drone gets pulled right. down. <laughs> now I heard you talking about um, potential ramifications if you get you know, something like this was to happen and then your insurance company, you know, say if I'm a if I'm a roofing contractor and I have general liability insurance, um, do I have some risk there with regards to, you know, if this was to happen, if I was to get in trouble, um, I have heard stories of this where my general liability policy might be in, in jeopardy. Is that? So Absolutely. Uh, what the deal is, is if you're operating commercially and you don't have a commercial license, uh, your insurance company can say that you were inappropriately operating and deny the claim. Wow. Well, I, you know, I, <laughs> I don't know what the reality is, how, how common this is going to be. And, you know, I know that I've seen plenty of roofing contractors, plenty of con just people in general that are actually technically using it for their business. That's the technicality, right? I mean, yes. it's, it's literally once it, once it goes out of hobby stage and you actually maybe own a company or you operate, you know, on some level, whether you're just a independent sole entrepreneur and you're a photographer, that still qualifies from my understanding. And once you cross that barrier, you're now at risk and considered commercial, yes. correct? In fact, you actually even said the key word. You said hobby. If you're using it for a hobby, if you're using it for fun, you don't have your license. But once it becomes a tool for you and you're using it in, in your business in any way, then you do need to be certified to be able to operate your drone commercially. Okay, and we're not going to be able to 
BS our way through this? Or, I mean, is, I mean, you know, hey, I'm just checking out my neighbor's house and flying around. I mean, is it, I mean, pretty much if they see I'm in there in a logo truck, well, you, I, you know, I got the red truck or whatever. You're welcome to try it, but a lot of real estate agents and a lot of other companies have tried similar arguments and most of them end up with about a thousand dollar fine. So if that's the path that you want to try to go down, it's certainly an option, but I would suggest spending a little bit more time, as you said, taking the course, learning the practical information, and then getting your certificate. Okay. So that's, you know, that's the, that's the beef of it. The other, the other part is, I mean, this, you know, going through that, if I'm, listen, I own, I own a few drones and I would, I would just have to admit I'm a terrible drone pilot. I mean, just really probably just don't spend enough time on it. Um, want the toy and then do use it, um, for work. We, we, you know, we use them. Um, but we have other people here that are better than, than I am at it. Um, but the other part of this is you're going to gain the practical knowledge to be a better pilot and more likely to want to use your drone. Is that really part of, you know, the whole going through the process and, and taking your test is it's more of just the understanding in general, all of the pieces that go into this, correct? I would agree. Um, I think you're, once you learn the physics and how the drone operates and what it does, you, you build a lot of confidence level in order to let you fly better and do more. You know, you have an understanding of what the capabilities are and where the capabilities end. Yeah, and as you said, like you're, you're still using a little bit, but you need to practice. And the biggest thing is, is a lot of this is foreign information. It's not something that you've been exposed to before. But we're not talking about calculus. We're just talking about how to use a tool. But you need to learn this information that you're just not familiar with. And the typically easier way to do that is with some sort of instructor or course that can be guaranteed to be providing you with the correct information in order for you to go out and operate safely. Okay. Yeah, because I know you can you can literally watch a course or or go to a course on just how to fly a particular drone, right? So, you know, we've got a few different ones. I can watch that. But I think in addition to that, that's that's one thing. But really, the understanding of, you know, a lot more of the scientific pieces behind it, um, intended use, some of those things. And, and, you know, I think all of that coupled together, for me, made me feel like, okay, I now have more confidence, maybe that's the better way to put it, as to what's going on. And really understanding, like, the whole, you know, um, uh, the FFA side of it or FAA side of it is to airspace and you know what I'm supposed to be doing up there uh, why I should be looking for what I'm looking for and all mm -hmm. the things you kind of learn learn along the way with that obstacles I mean I I don't really you know you don't really think about all that stuff until you're out there doing it and then you, you know you're kind of wondering you know am I gonna hit something should I you know what should I be looking for what does this mean what does that mean and, and it it feels like just Going through the process of this, not only should I be doing it if I'm going to operate commercially, but it's going to give me a lot more confidence when I do it. I, I completely agree. As you said, operating with confidence and going out and being familiar with any challenge that could, uh, could be incorporated into your work, um, that's really the difference between somebody who's just doing a job and somebody who's a true professional, is understanding how to use the tool and use it to the best ability. Cool. Now, before we go, there's a couple, like we got some sweet toys here. And I just want to, I want to bring, I'm going to grab a couple here. So we've got, we'll just go back kind of, we'll call it old school, which I hope that's not offensive, but to me, no. this, this one's been around for a minute, right? Yep. So what we've got a Phantom, <coughs> Phantom 4 Pro Correct. right now, and this is a limited black edition, right? Yep. Now it looks, you would think, you know, they've all looked the same since day one. Um, there are a lot of technological advances. Um, for instance, this is your Phantom 4 Pro. It's got 360 degree obstacle avoidance, which are these sensors along the sides here. Okay. And it also has a one inch, uh, a one inch sensor that takes 20 megapixel photos and it does 4K video. Yeah, because the videos that's coming out of this 4K, it's sweet. I mean, Absolutely. You know, yeah, there's some newer stuff that maybe isn't, we'll get to here in a second, maybe isn't as big or, or maybe is more uh, inviting from a standpoint of it's newer or whatever, but I mean, not that this is a very old technology changes so fast, but mm -hmm. um, I mean, these things, the images that we get from them are, are incredible. We have this same one, obviously not in, in black, but um, you know, it, it's, it's a nice quality uh, drone and, and it really is able to do a lot for the average you know, person, average company. As you said, I think it's yeah. gonna do pretty much anything you'd want, right? Of course. So depending on your budget, it may be even something that you jump into because you can get it a, maybe a little bit more inexpensive than some of the other stuff that's newer, technology's always more expensive. Well, that's something to touch base on as well. Um, on our channel, we're actually gonna do some reviews of the newer drones that come out. You know, one of the most important things is that people pick the correct tool for the job. So, you know, a lot of people will just go on Amazon and be like, oh, a drone. Okay, let me get that. Well, we're going to try to provide people with the, 
with the knowledge in order to pick what works best for them and what they're doing. Sure, that makes complete sense because I, I know that we've even got um, some smaller ones and I don't have one here, but we've shown it before. We had the little spark, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's got its place as well and we've kind of talked about that. Sure. Now, this is actually one of the, this is a brand new bad chicken here, right? I mean, this this is the- Yes, that's the Mavic the, Air. The Mavic Air. So this thing is real compact and it breaks down, correct? The, correct. The wings fold in or the- Yep. Yep. Arms fold in like that, rotate. and this one reverses. Well, the best part about this one is the design here. What they did is they went ahead and set the camera back so that when you crash this into something, you're not going to damage your camera and your gimbal. Yeah, because other one's out in front Correct. a bit, right? Yep, and we've seen that too where they've, they've come in cracked. And this here is a, a 12 megapixel camera with, a, uh, with 4K as well, 4K video as well. And that's like an so incredible it's, camera. Absolutely. Yes. It's not bad at all. For the average person, if you were to put this footage on like a normal size TV, if you didn't tell them it was from a drone, they wouldn't know it. They would think it's from any other camera or any other TV show that's on air. Yeah. I mean, it really, I mean, you think about just a couple years back, that sort of thing was barely available to the average public. Oh, yeah. You couldn't even get your hands on it. Now, a couple years back, we wished there was something like this. I know that, I know that I'm supposed to be careful and, and, and not touch this a whole lot because this is actually on its way to somebody, right? Yeah. But this is an Inspire, it's an Inspire 2, correct? Inspire 1. Is it Inspire 1? Yep. Okay. Inspire 1 V2, because there's two models. That's right. Okay, so this one's got, it's got custom paint on it. Correct. Um, this thing, so would you call them articulating arms? or Because I, I know when you fire this guy up, the arms move in and out and does uh, They go up and down. Okay. Uh, what that does is it gets the arms out of the way of the camera. So you have 360 camera with no arms, no propellers that's, in the way. That's right, yeah, because these go, these will actually bring themselves up or even drop down and then, you know, for landing and whatnot. Correct. You, you'd set that up. So it's a little heavier, um, but this one now actually has a little payload to it, correct? Correct. With somewhere in the neighborhood of about five pounds it can, correct. It can move. I this, don't know what you're, you This know. has choices. There's three different cameras, four different cameras you could use on here. You can use a thermal color camera that we make. Uh, you can use a, a professional uh, micro four thirds camera or like a, a 16 megapixel 4K camera. Or um, an NDVI if you're working with absolutely. vegetation. There's okay. a ton of different payloads you can use for just this bird here. This is the all around, you know, big time commercial, get it done. This is Put all the, reliable. Yeah, all the big stuff on it between the different thermals, colors, big zoom cameras, yep. all that stuff. Extra batteries too, correct? Yep. Yep. So this thing's got a big flight time if you load it up, you know, for, for what it is, you know, for how much you're getting from it. So yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Well, I guess uh, that's, that's about all the time we got for this, but uh, you know, guys, think about this as you're starting to push more and more into that use of drones with your roofing company because it's legit. This, this uh, what's, what's the course called again? The 107? Our intro the to test? 107 test prep. Yes, okay. we discuss all the different things you need to know in order to get that certificate to operate commercially. Yeah, so in, guys, you need to be thinking about this because if you or anybody who works for you is going to be you know, actually out using these drones, this is, this is real, this is legit. You do need to look into this, and I know that there's lots of ways to get this. There, you know, these guys are actually putting out an amazing product online where you can bring your whole team, get them all tested. But you know, the bottom line is it's, it's real. You need to get it if you're gonna be flying drones out there, and drones are an awesome way to market your roofing company. The things these things can do have never been out there and available to guys like us before. We can just go buy one off the shelf and make amazing videos to market our roofing company. So think about it, take it, use it. Good luck out there.